Howdy, y'all! I'm Rissy, and I review things. Today, as the culmination of a year of testing, I am reviewing 33 mineral sunscreens. Mineral sunscreens are absolutely incredible when it comes to protecting sensitive skin from the sun, but that oftentimes comes with a horrible chalky texture and complexion ruining white cast. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you go watch my video all about mineral sunscreens. It just talks about how they work, how they're different from so-called chemical, or as I prefer, organic sunscreens. Or rather not so different, and some best practices for how to use them. We got a ton of them to get through, so let's lay down some rules. Rule number one, mineral sunscreens only. Nothing that's primarily minerals with one chemical filter. There's a lot of so-called mineral sunscreens that actually have octanoxate in them. While my skin doesn't really have problems with chemical filters, for a lot of people they can be incredibly irritating and cause breakouts, redness, rashes, or exacerbate eczema. So there'll be none of that in today's review. Rule number two, these sunscreens have to contain at least some zinc oxide so that you can ensure that you're getting protection for the entirety of the UV range. I go over this more in my video all about mineral sunscreens, but zinc is necessary to make sure you're protected from those long wave UVA rays. Titanium dioxide just doesn't cover that part of the spectrum. Rule number three, the sunscreen has to have a UVA rating. I am not here to trifle with shit when I don't know what kind of protection it's giving me. There are actually a couple of sunscreens on this list that don't have a proper UVA rating, but we'll get into that later. Surprisingly, this did not exclude all North American sunscreens. There's actually a few North American companies that do have proper UVA ratings for their sunscreens. So that's a pleasant change for my last sunscreen review. Next rule, no tints. There's no such thing as a truly universal tint for a mineral sunscreen that can make it blend into absolutely everybody's skin. Maybe someday I'll do a review of tinted mineral sunscreens, but they're gonna have to have a shade range, not just one tint that they claim will work for everyone. Next, no fragrance. Fragrance in skincare can be sensitizing, can trigger allergies even if you didn't previously have them. I try to avoid it whenever possible, especially in products that I would be using every day. The final rule, of course, is that if two products are basically the same in terms of their performance, the one that's cheaper will always win. What you're gonna see on the screen is not just the total price that I paid for the bottle of sunscreen, but also what that breaks down to in terms of price per milliliter. The standards of evaluation are mostly based on texture and white cast. How much protection can a sunscreen offer you, but still be wearable? Those are my primary criteria. I'll be providing pictures of each sunscreen right when I put it on, and then five minutes later to show you how the white cast fades, or doesn't in some cases. My skin is naturally quite dry, and I live in a very cold, dry climate. So moisturizing sunscreens are always gonna be more appealing to me, but that doesn't mean there's no such thing as a mattifying sunscreen that doesn't dehydrate you. So don't worry, oily skin people. I'm looking out for you too. I take all these sunscreen ratings in good faith that they actually offer the same amount of protection that they state that they do. Last year there was the whole Korean sunscreen scandal where a bunch of sunscreens that had been made by the same company didn't actually have the same level of protection that they advertised, but this sort of scandal is not uncommon and also applies to a bunch of North American sunscreens too. So in order to keep myself from going crazy, I just assume that the rating that they state is the accurate rating, unless proven otherwise. Some Korean sunscreen manufacturers have actually started providing their test results from independent labs, which is great. I'll be displaying information about the sunscreen, including what filters are in it and whether or not they're nano-sized if the company made that information available. Be sure to watch all the way to the end, because of course, like with all my mega reviews, there will be a giveaway of the winning product. With all of that out of the way, I have donned the robes of judgment and purified myself in the sight of gods and man. Let the battle begin! Kicking off the countdown from worst to first, number 33, Elta MD UV Restore SPF 40. After my sunscreen review last year, a lot of people requested that I look into Elta MD. It's a highly regarded brand making sunscreens for people with really sensitive skin and gets rave reviews everywhere. Now here's an interesting thing. Most of their sunscreens, while they're primarily mineral based, usually do have at least one chemical filter in there. There's four Elta MD sunscreens in this review and they're all the mineral only ones. And they actually do UVA testing for all their sunscreens. Great, what could go wrong? Well, when a thing sets your fucking face on fire, that is generally a sign that things are going wrong. I have no idea who would have formulated this stupid piece of shit sunscreen because it is full of ginger extract. 
Ginger is delicious. It's wonderful for flavoring food, but if you bite into something and you're like, ooh, that's got a bit of a kick to it, that's kind of spicy, you don't put it on your face. I don't have a picture for this, but here's a dramatic recreation of what it felt like to put this on my skin. I immediately had to take it off and I did not retry it because it burned and it burned and it burned like absolute hellfire, which is of course the opposite of what you want from a mineral sunscreen. It's supposed to be soothing to your skin, not inflammatory. I don't get why some companies think that ginger is great for skincare. Like yeah, it can cause increased blood flow to your cheeks and give you that warm, rosy glow of someone who's, you know, on fire. Yeah, just absolute, utter fucking fail. What even were you thinking, Elda MD? God damn. Number 32, Isden Photo Protector, Fusion Fluid Mineral. I had such high hopes for this because I've heard a lot about how Isden, which is this company from Spain, makes absolutely great sunscreens. Unfortunately, a lot of their products are fragranced or have a lot of alcohol in them, but this one didn't have any of that in it. It should be great, right? Well, in addition to having a terrible fucking white cast, this burned my eyes. I have no idea how. It's a mineral sunscreen. The whole point of this is to be good for sensitive skin and not cause burning sensations. And yet, absolutely do not recommend, but it's not the absolute worst because it only set fire to my eyes, not all of my skin, I guess. So there's that. Number 31, Ego Sun Sense Sensitive Sun Lotion. Boy, I tried saying that three times. This gets the award for absolute worst white cast. Seriously, this shit made me look like I belonged on the walking goddamn dead. The photos speak for themselves, I think. With some sunscreens, the white cast will continue to fade as the day goes on. Oh no, not this shit. It's white cast stay chalky white for 12 solid hours on my face. It's also drying. The problem with a lot of mineral sunscreens is they can be drying to the upper layers of your skin and enhance any dry or flaky patches you might have. This did all of that and so much more. You just feel it sitting there. It's heavy. This is everything wrong with mineral sunscreens in one convenient bottle. Shiseido Wet Force Ultra Sun Protection Lotion. <laughs> oh my, oh this stuff. This is advertised as a sunscreen for sensitive skin that is also extremely water resistant. If your skin gets wet, the Wet Force technology will more firmly adhere the sunscreen to your skin. Doesn't that sound crazy? Oh, it is so totally true. And that is the worst part. This stuff has a ludicrous white cast. It's probably because of the insane amounts of both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in it. So I have no doubt about its protection value. The problem is, is that it is impossible to get off of your skin. I had to get in the shower and use an oil cleanser three times to get this off of my body. Because of course, when I try a sunscreen out, I'll usually use it on my face, my neck, my chest, my arms, my hands, right? I am half covered in this stuff and it took me 30 minutes in the shower just to get clean again. I'm pretty sure that my cleavage is now a super fun site that will be leaking titanium dioxide for the next 500 years. I guess this could be worthwhile if you've got kids and you want to take them out to the beach or the pool. This will ensure that the sunscreen stays on them the whole day and probably the next day and the day after that. That's the only circumstances under which I could see anyone actually wanting this stuff to contact their skin. Disgusting. Number 29, Umbrella Face Mineral Sunscreen. This sunscreen does not have a proper UVA rating. I foolishly assumed that it did because it's from Umbrella and literally every other sunscreen that they make has a UVA rating. It's all got the UVA circle on it, which is a European thing showing that the sunscreen's UVA protection is at least one third of the stated SPF, the UVB protection. Nope, not for this one. It's also primarily titanium dioxide with some zinc and it's, well, I mean, you can see the white cast is absolutely egregious. It's disgusting in all the ways mineral sunscreens can be disgusting. It smelled kind of off and was intensely dehydrating to my skin. Fail. Number 28, Ultra Sun Mineral Body Sunscreen. In my last review, I tried an Ultra Sun product for the face that sucked and one for the body that was infinitely superior and also cost half the price and got you twice the product. I was kind of hoping that would happen this time. That did not happen. It is admittedly, by price per milliliter, cheaper than their mineral sunscreen for the face. That is the only good thing I have to say about it because <laughs> the pump is broken. It has a pump, which at first I was like, oh, that's gonna be great. The problem is the sunscreen is so 
thick and chalky that the pump just cannot handle it. It's too much. I can't even show you the tube because the sunscreen's gravitational pull just sucked it right down to the bottom. So if you're gonna try and use this, you have to squeeze out a thick brontosaurus turd of it and go from there. And it is, oh god, it's so, so thick. You could just feel it sitting on your skin like a 900 pound gorilla. The white cast is actually not bad when it dries down, but you can still feel it there. And I mean, that's if you can work with this at all. It's very hard to spread out on your skin as well. It took me like a solid, I don't know, three minutes of rubbing before I could get it to properly adhere to my skin at all. This is the kind of sunscreen that gets all caught up in your hair and it's almost impossible to massage it in fully. Ugh. So much for that Swiss engineering, huh? And rounding out the absolute worst, we have the Ultra Sun Mineral Face Sunscreen. First of all, this is a sunscreen for ants, which is my term for any sunscreen that's 40 milliliters or less. This promises ultra light protection for the face and this and the previous sunscreen do have a little bit of alcohol in them. It's not very high on the ingredients list and I did not find that to irritate my skin. What was irritating to my skin was these disgusting and I'm gonna, I'm not sure if you can see this disgusting crusty goo that forms around here. Yeah, that's what the sunscreen does on your face. I wouldn't even call it pilling. It's something far worse than that. It's crusty, y'all. It's crusty. Once it's dried down, the white cast isn't terrible, but I just could not tolerate the feel of this on my skin. It's gross. You're trying to rub it in and you feel these horrible little things everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. No, just no. And now on to the sunscreens that are merely bad as opposed to life-ruiningly horrible. Number 26, the Avane Very High Protection Mineral Fluid. I had kind of assumed that since this was a fluid, a more milky texture, that it would have less of a white cast and absorb better into the skin. I was wrong. I was very wrong. It has a terrible fucking white cast. It's also slightly dehydrating and it's kind of pricey, especially considering it's a sunscreen for ants at 40 milliliters. Do not want. The Primera Skin Relief Sun Milk. I had very high expectations for this one because Primera is a high-end Korean skincare brand. Their Miracle Seed Lotus Essence is a cult favorite product and things that I've tried from them in the past were very nice and very luxurious even. This sunscreen was kind of deceptive in that its white cast isn't terrible. It's a very very milky, runny lotion. And I thought, oh wow, this is nice despite how incredibly expensive it is. But then as I wore it throughout the day, these like oily pools of it would bubble up on my skin out of nowhere, making the white cast worse as I wore it and turning my skin into an oil slick. How? How does that even happen? I don't know, but I don't ever want to try it again. What an expensive failure. Bonjour, which hazel no sebum sun shield. I was so excited about this because it promises to be a mattifying but not dehydrating sunscreen. Those are quite rare and especially good for people who have oily or combination skin. Yeah, twas not to be. I will say the texture on this is quite nice. The white cast isn't bad at all. In fact, it dies down to next to nothing. It is a sunscreen for ants, but that's not the worst thing on earth because it's not that expensive. So why is it down in the bad list? Because it's got fucking orange oil in it. I admit I should have been scanning the ingredients list more closely, but in a sunscreen advertised as not having any artificial fragrance or any sensitizing ingredients, I'd kind of assume would not have citrus oil. I was gonna give this a shit rating just based on the principle. Citrus oils, if you don't know, contain chemical compounds called foranocoumarins that react to UV light, kill your skin cells in such a way that it lets the sun right in and will give you melanoma. Why would you put that in a sunscreen? That's the stupidest shit I've ever seen and I was raised a young earth creationist. Fuck this shit. Do better, bonjour. Number 23, rounding out the bad. The Make Prem Defense Me Calming Sun Cream. This has a beautiful texture. It's a very watery cream, so it feels very light on the skin, but it's also moisturizing without being oily. It is pretty dewy, but not too much so to where you start to look, you know, sweaty. It's a zinc only sunscreen with absolute minimal white cast after a few minutes. Why is it here in the bad? Well, this is advertised as something that's very safe for sensitive skin and isn't going to cause any irritation. And it is full of fragrance that is not advertised as fragrance, right? This is another tricksy, tricksy sunscreen that tries to pretend like it doesn't have fragrant ingredients, but is full of rose flower water and jasmine flower water. Now, this isn't gonna be as 
add as, say, something that's full of the essential oils from those flowers, but those flower waters, or hydrosols as they're called, are still full of fragrance, and the particles that make it smell so good can be extremely irritating to your skin, especially if your skin is sensitive and you're the sort of person who would be looking for a product for sensitive skin, which this advertises itself as. I missed all of that because usually when I'm just looking, I'm looking for something that says fragrance or listing essential oils. I didn't catch it, that's on me, but if you have sensitive skin, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is violence. Moving on to the sunscreens that, while they weren't terrible, they weren't great either. They're just kind of meh. We have the Due UV Sunscreen. So this is only an SPF 45, though it does have four PA pluses, so a UVA protection factor of at least 16. And it's a sunscreen for ants, and the white cast is just absolutely terrible. I'd been curious about this brand, and I will say my first experience did not impress me. I guess on the plus side, since there wasn't very much of it, I didn't have to endure it for all that long in my life, but that's literally the only good thing I can say about it. Yeah. It didn't injure my skin or dry me out too badly, but man, that white cast is just mm, a no-go. There's actually like gonna be a run of products here that are just really stunningly mediocre Japanese sunscreens. But don't worry, things do get better. For now, however, we have to contend with the Ant Free Whitening UV Cream. Another sunscreen for ants, and this one, while the white cast isn't terrible, it smells like corn nuts. I looked at the ingredients list and I cannot tell you what on earth would make it smell that way, but it is noticeably like corn nuts, and I'm putting it on my face and I'm like, I'm mildly repelled? I guess there are some people who really like the smell of corn nuts. I am not one of them, and for that reason alone, this would be in the mess section, but also you only get 30 milliliters of it and it's a little bit pricey for what you get. I did not notice any serious benefits to helping fade my hyperpigmentation or anything along those lines, but then again, I don't know how I would with only 30 milliliters. You'd probably have to buy several bottles to see any actual improvement and you'd have to deal with all of the fucking corn nuts, so no thank you. Ihata Medicated UV Screen. I had really high hopes about this one because it's another medicated quasi-drug from Japan meaning that it's got some medicinal ingredients in it. And the ingredient is a really potent form of licorice extract, which is so good for the skin. A lot of people have heard about it because it's good for fading hyperpigmentation, but it's also incredibly soothing and good for healing your skin from irritation. And obviously in a mineral sunscreen, that'd be great, right? The white cast though. The white cast is not great and I just felt it. I could feel it sitting on my skin the whole day. I don't like to be extra conscious of my flesh. Um, when I'm just, you know, trying to do my thing. And so it was very much a disappointment. It's got 50 milliliters of it though, so it's not a sunscreen for ants. I guess there's that. I didn't notice any healing or soothing just because I couldn't get over the feel of it on my skin. Number 19, the Kose Sun Cut Pro Defense Non-Chemical UV Sunscreen Milk. Another product I had high hopes for. You get a goodly amount of this, 60 milliliters. Much like the Ihata, I found the white cast to be disappointing and it just sat very heavily on my skin and was lightly dehydrating. I'm sorry, Kose, but this was just mediocre. Just kind of okay, I guess. Coming to something that was almost good. Almost. The Uriage Berry Sun Mineral Cream. You get a ton of this stuff, full 100 milliliters, so it's not very expensive. The protection is high, it's got that UVA circle, and it's really nice and moisturizing, like a genuinely moisturizing, but not greasy, sunscreen. So what's the problem? Well, as you can see, the white cast. The white cast is the problem. It starts off terrible, and while it gets a little better, it doesn't improve nearly enough for me to give this a good rating. Now, I will say this sits pretty well under makeup. If you wear makeup every day, you might not care about that because it is very nice and very moisturizing, but don't worry, I've got nice moisturizing and inexpensive sunscreens coming up that don't have this level of white cast. Number 17, the second entry from Elta MD, the UV Replenish Broad Spectrum SPF 44. This is a big improvement over the previous entry. It did not burn my skin or my eyes. No shady extracts lurking in it. It's water resistant up to 40 minutes and it's a little bit moisturizing, but it's white casty. It's kind of chalky and just not great. Better, absolutely a whole lot better, but it really is just okay. And rounding out the meh, 
end of things, we have the Avain Solaire UV Mineral Multi-Defense Sunscreen. This is lightly moisturizing, but not greasy. It's got minimal white cast and a whole 50 milliliters, and I absolutely love the packaging. I love these kind of upside down squeezy tubes. Whoop, there it goes. <laughs> Comes out quite easily. Why did I not give it a good rating? Because it does not have a proper UVA rating, and I was legitimately tricked. Here's the photo of the product from the website. If you look closely, you see that it's got that UVA circle on it. But this, the actual product, does not. Beautyhabit.com, you fucking lied to me. Which is especially weird because I went and I checked out the Avain website in the US where this is sold, because obviously if it was sold in Europe, it would have a UVA rating. And the official website does not lie. It just has a picture of the product. So I'm like, did Beautyhabit.com make their own picture of this to deliberately deceive people into thinking that it had a UVA rating? I have absolutely no idea where that picture would have come from otherwise. It clearly had to be modified. It's a great mystery and well, if you don't mind not knowing what the actual UVA protection of your sunscreen is, you would probably like this a lot just because it is really nice. As per the rules, I gotta have a UVA rating. So this gets bumped all the way out of the good and down into the meh, which is really too bad. But the law is the law. At long last, we come to the products that not only don't suck, but are actually good. Hooray! Stuff that I would even start to recommend. Number 15, the Skin and Lab Barrier Derm Daily Sunscreen. This is really, really nice. So it's kind of a sunscreen for ants. It's only got 45 milliliters, but it's full of ceramides. And if you do have a damaged skin barrier, it's really, really good at just like healing and moisturizing. I found that it was very pleasant in terms of its texture and its white cast is minimal to non-existent. So why doesn't it have a better rating? Well, because as far as I can tell, you can't get your hands on this stuff for love nor money. I'm not sure if it's been discontinued or if this is just a COVID thing or, you know, supply chain issues meant that this is out of stock, but you can't buy it anywhere. And that's really too bad because I genuinely liked this a lot. Bring it back, skin and lab. Mm? And in a larger size, huh? I'll give you a much better rating. Ah? Like they care. HelioCare 360 Mineral Tolerance Fluid SPF 50. This is my one slip up in terms of sunscreens with tints. It did not advertise itself as such. You have to look at the ingredients list and notice that there's iron oxides on there. And when I'm looking at ingredients lists, I'm mostly looking for things like fragrance, essential oils, that kind of shit. It's actually very nice in terms of its texture. And because it does have a tint, it blended into my skin beautifully and did not exhibit any white cast. But this tint is clearly not universal. I'm gonna put another picture up. If you look closely, you can see the tint is kind of like separating out from the rest of the sunscreen. So I don't think this would look good on anybody with skin darker than mine. If they were to come out with a whole range of tints for this, I'd consider recommending it. But since they don't, I won't. It's also quite pricey. Number 13, the Elta MD UV Active Full Body Sunscreen SPF 50. This is a bit of a weird one because as you can see the white cast is not bad, but it's not great either. What sets this one apart is that it is very water resistant up to 80 minutes. It's got an SPF of 50 and a PA of four plus. So great UVA protection. And while it is pretty great for heavy duty outdoor shit, I did actually test that during the summertime and it didn't come off. It actually rinses away pretty easily with a proper cleansing oil. Unlike the Shiseido Wet Force. As far as an athletic sunscreen, not for every day, this is pretty good. Good. But the problem is I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for every day. It's very thick and it takes some effort to work it into your skin. I will say it felt oddly luxurious because it smells like oatmeal cookies. I don't know why it doesn't have colloidal oatmeal in it, but it smells like oatmeal cookies. And with the thicker texture, it's sort of like you're rubbing oatmeal cookie dough onto your face, which again, I found to be oddly luxurious. Not enough to want to wear it every day though. <laughs> Number 12, the Coats Face Prime and Protect non-tinted sunscreen. This also does come in a tint, but again, not a range of tints. So I went for the untinted version. This is another rarity in terms of North American sunscreens that do have a PA rating and it's got a PA of four plus, so pretty darn good. This is a very minimalist sunscreen brand. Coats stands for contains only titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Aside from that, it's got quite a few silicones in it, but a very short ingredients list. No botanical extracts that could potentially irritate sensitive skin or anything like that. It's also more of a titanium 
aluminum dioxide sunscreen with less zinc. And I will say, for that type of sunscreen, it has a bonkers low level of white cast, but it still does have a white cast, which is why I didn't rate it all that highly. As a primer, it is quite good if you like silicon heavy primers. I'm actually wearing it today on top of another sunscreen to see what it's like as a primer. And it did an incredible job at filling in the large pores around my nose. That's actually what I would recommend it as if your skin is sensitive and you want a little extra protection under your makeup, put this on top of a sunscreen that you're already wearing to fill in pores and give you just a nice kind of satin matte finish. Cause otherwise it's a sunscreen for ants, only 40 milliliters and it is a bit pricey for what you get. As an everyday sunscreen, eh. It's a primer under makeup, awesome. Number 11, the Benton Mineral Sun Cream. They've changed the packaging on this since it was first released, but not the formula. This is the older packaging though. This is a really, really nice sunscreen. As you can see, it's got minimal white cast and it's so moisturizing. It's very much a watery cream. You put it on and it just feels like bursts of moisture coming through. That aspect was an absolute delight. What I just couldn't get over was the fact that it smells sweet in a weird generic way that makes it smell like toilet bowl cleaner. Not really what I want to be putting on my face every day. I'm so sorry, Benton, but I cannot get over the way this smells. It's also got some botanical extracts that, since mineral sunscreens are generally geared towards people with more sensitive skin, some of the stuff in there, it's like, eh, that could be irritating. So for those reasons, it's down towards the bottom end of the good, but it is still good. And if it didn't smell like toilet bowl cleaner, I would have probably enjoyed it a lot more. Kicking off the top 10, Copper Tone Protection UV Plus. This is a Japanese sunscreen that is very light on the skin. You really don't feel it on your skin at all, which is fantastic. The problem is you can kind of see it on your skin a little bit. It's one of those sunscreens where the white cast is only visible when you're turning your head and there's this kind of bluish sheen on the high points of your face. So I guess if you're going for like a goth highlight, it could work that way. Otherwise it's very nice. It is lightly moisturizing, but not too much so. The problems of course are the light white cast and it is a sunscreen for ants. It's only 40 milliliters and it's not nearly cheap enough to make that truly feasible, at least not for me. Number nine, Manyo, our vegan Sika Daily Sun Cream. This brand used to be called Manyo Factory. They've revamped a lot of their packaging and some of their products. This sunscreen is part of a whole line of sunscreens that they have. And I just thought it was really nice. It's another watery, almost a gel cream with minimal white cast, like an absolutely beautiful texture to it. It smells like tea tree oil to me. It does have tea tree in it. I don't have any problems with tea tree oil and tea tree oil can be beneficial to your skin if you have acne. It can, however, be irritating, especially if your skin is sensitive. So that's part of why it's got a lower rating. The other is the price. This is expensive. It is 50 milliliters, which is nice, but it's quite pricey and it's hard to find. It's a really solid product, but I just wish it was more readily available and at a lower price. <laughs> Number eight, the Dr. G Mild Up Sun. This is a reformulation of an older product and it's lovely. So this is a zinc oxide only sunscreen, which means it has pretty minimal white cast, like a teeny tiny bit if you look closely. And the texture, it's another one of those really beautiful, light, watery, moisturizing, but not greasy mineral sunscreens. It's also pretty reasonably priced at $20 US for 50 milliliters. It's easier to get your hands on and just a really all around nice sunscreen. From here on out, it's basically just sort of, which is the least white casty and the nicest in terms of texture, but they're all pretty similar with one mystery factor that we'll get into in just a few minutes. If you want something that's gonna be kind to your skin and isn't gonna have terrible white cast and is lightly moisturizing, this is a good choice. And at the top of the good, we have the Suntique I'm Pure Sika Sun Cream. This is lovely. It's got pretty much no white cast, a beautifully light texture. It's one of the least white casty sunscreens on here. The only downside is it smells a little weird, not so much so that I didn't enjoy using it, and it is kind of pricey for 50 milliliters. But otherwise, it's just very, very good. We are into the best sunscreens. All of these I would highly recommend. You really can't go wrong with any of these six sunscreens, starting with the Elta MD UV Pure 
SPF 47. This is a face and body sunscreen, and this is designed for heavier outdoor activity. It's water resistant for up to 80 minutes, which I did test by actually going out in the hot sun and moving my body around, which ugh, it does not sweat off, but at the same time, it doesn't require a fire hose to blast it off of your face. It is not nearly as thick as the Elta MD SPF 50. It spreads more easily, it has less white cast, and it's just lighter in texture in general. This is basically like the perfect compromise between a heavy duty mineral outdoor sunscreen and an everyday facial sunscreen. I just really enjoyed this. If you have sensitive skin and you do a lot of stuff out in the sun, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. But it's also not bad as a just an everyday sunscreen. I mean, obviously I used up every last drop of it. It's also got a PA of 4 plus, so great UVA protection. Well done, Elta MD. I am gratified that all those rave reviews were not wrong. Number five, the Axis Y Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen. You may be thinking, what the hell is she waving around? That's not what this sunscreen looks like. And this is a mini size that I purchased as part of a kit, a little starter kit that Axis Y makes with mini versions of a lot of their products because for months you could not get your hands on the full sized bottle of this stuff. That's how popular it is. It just sold out like crazy and only in November were they finally able to restock it. And I can completely see why. It's light, it's moisturizing, but it's not greasy. It has absolutely minimal to pretty much no white cast. It's very gentle. It feels delightful. It's just all around great and not too expensive. The full size obviously is quite a bit larger. So I just really, really like this packaging. It stands up nicely and the full size does have the same style as well. Just a great choice all around. Number four, the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Natural sun cream. This sunscreen almost did not get reviewed by me because multiple websites are printing the wrong ingredients list for it. I think there's been a copy and paste error somewhere because multiple websites that I looked at have the same ingredients list as its hyaluronic acid watery sun gel, but this is so much better than that one. I did not like that sunscreen. It's got a couple of old-fashioned chemical filters in it that burned the shit out of my eyes. This is like a greatly improved mineral only version of that sunscreen. It's got this really nice packaging. I love this style. But more importantly, it's zinc oxide only and has a mineral to non-existent white cast after five minutes. And it's got such a nice texture. It is very light, almost weightless on the skin, but deeply hydrating. If you are at all struggling with dry, irritated skin, this is gonna be pretty helpful. It's also got a bunch of really nice, just soothing ingredients on an otherwise fairly short ingredients list. And it's got this kind of smoothing factor to it. Like it genuinely makes my pores look smaller and kind of blurred, sits beautifully under makeup. This is the other sunscreen that I'm wearing today and it's absolutely gorgeous. Just a total winner when it comes to something for people with sensitive skin if you need healing and you want to blur out texture, I really recommend this one. Isn't tree, please be more vigilant about your ingredients list. Otherwise, I would never have known this was a mineral sunscreen. I wouldn't have bought it. And oh, my life would be so much poorer for that. All right, we are into the top three. And boy, do we have some winners. Number three, Be Plain Clean Ocean Non Nano Mild Sun Cream. This is a lot like several of the previous entries. It's a Korean sunscreen that has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in it, that has next to no white cast, a lovely texture that smooths over your skin and it manages to be moisturizing, but not greasy. So what makes this one so special? The independent testing that has verified the SPF and the PA rating. This was independently tested and found to have an SPF of just over 50 and a PA rating of just over 16. So you know exactly what you are getting with this sunscreen. Not to sound like an ad from a clothing store from the early part of 2020, but in these uncertain times, couldn't we all use a little more certainty? Yes, yes we could. I absolutely love this. My only nitpicks are that it's a little bit harder to find and it can be pricey depending on where you buy it. But you get a full 50 milliliter, so it's not a sunscreen for ants, and it is absolutely worth the money. Win! Number two, Cyberderm Simply Zinc Light Untinted. 
Transparent Sunscreen Lotion. This is an absolute miracle of a product. Cyberderm is a Canadian company that makes Venus Williams' mineral sunscreens that you may have seen if you live in the US. Venus Williams is a dark-skinned black woman who has sensitive skin and she wanted a mineral sunscreen that wouldn't make her look ashy and undead. And so she got in touch with Cyberderm and they made her mineral sunscreens. The reason I didn't review any of those is because they don't have a UVA rating and they're also expensive as hell. This is also pricey, but you get a full 100 milliliters of the stuff and wow, it is amazing. This is 25% zinc oxide and yet it manages to have like no white cast. I don't know how they did it, but they did. It's incredible. It also has a UVA protection factor of 20, which is about the highest you can get in a mineral sunscreen and have it still be wearable. It is a fairly light texture. It smells a little bit like yogurt, but that may or may not be a bad thing as far as you're concerned. The only real caveat here is that you do absolutely have to use it up like it's antibiotic. So you can't let this sit on your shelf for like four to six months and expect it to have a good texture when you come back. It'll still go on and look really nice, but it starts to feel like gritty and gross. So just buy this and use it consistently instead of bouncing from sunscreen to sunscreen. Screen. Oh, Canada. It's that time, y'all. It's that time where we crown the winner, the champion, the best mineral sunscreen, and it is a complete dark horse upset victory. I was not in any way prepared for this sunscreen. If you watched my mega review from last year of sunscreens, you'll know how much I lamented the discontinuation of the Biore Kids UV milk. It was a chemical only sunscreen and it was being replaced with an all mineral filter sunscreen that had a lower PA rating and I was so sad. I assumed that that sunscreen was gonna suck and suck hard and no, it won. The winner is Biore UV Kids Pure Milk. That's right, the sunscreen that I thought I was gonna hate is the one that I just couldn't keep from coming back to over and over again. What makes it so good? It is whisper light on the skin. Like you barely feel it when you're putting it on, much less when you're wearing it throughout the day. It's also water, sweat, sand, and abrasion resistant because it's meant for little kids when you're going to the beach. It's incredibly gentle on the skin. It's got that wonderful smoothing effect that blurs your pores a bit and overall just has that lovely satin matte finish. It's not greasy. You get a ton of it, 70 milliliters, and it's dirt cheap. And practical concerns aside, it just has that, that something. It sparks joy. It made me really happy to use this. Yes, the PA rating is a three plus instead of a four plus, but honestly, I did not care. That's how much I like this sunscreen. And one of the cool things about taking all of these photos of sunscreen on my skin is that you can actually see my hyperpigmentation continued to fade while I was using them. So all of them work. Clearly the PA rating did not affect the performance of this sunscreen at all. And when it's this easy to wear, it's also easier to reapply. I've said many times in my videos, the best sunscreen is the one that you'll actually wear every day. And my God, did I love wearing this. I really did not think that that would happen. I thought I would hate it. And yet I couldn't help myself. And so for all of those reasons, this is the number one. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. Which of course means that in the giveaway, you're gonna get your very own UV Kids Pure Milk. God, this stuff is so great. I'm so excited to be giving it away. How does the giveaway work? You'll find all the rules in the box down below, but it's not hard to enter. All you have to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on this video with a hashtag Hmm, let's see. These are sunscreens made out of rocks, so how about hashtag rock my face? And that's it. That's all you gotta do, and you'll be entered. As a final note, I just wanted to say mental illness is an absolute bitch, and it really affects my productivity. So if you're still here hanging out with me, I just wanna say thank you. Thank y'all so much for being here, for watching my videos, and know that I am very grateful from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And until next time, stay cleaned and sunscreened, y'all. Bye!